Okay, 36, theorem 36, uh, two parts, and we will use uh, the results of theorem 18, which is why I went back to do that, uh, having uh, neglected it um, many, well, several uh, lectures back because I thought it was a bit redundant, but I was surprised in this lecture to learn that it, uh, it was not. All right, so theorem 36 says... Uh, Every infinite cyclic group, so theorem 36, part 1, every infinite cyclic group, cyclic group is isomorphic, remember this sign, isomorphic, to the group, the set of the integers and the binary operation is plus. Okay, that's what we have to prove. Uh, now, let's talk a little bit about um, an infinite cyclic group. Uh, so that means that the order of the, uh, the element, the generator, let's say, that's a cyclic group, right? So that means every, every element in that group can be generated, you know, created, made by the generator, just by having powers of the generator. So if your generator is little g, then g to power n, creates all the elements in that group. But if the order of your generator is infinity, then uh, the number of elements in your group generated by little g goes on forever. Right? So you can have a cyclic group, so it has a generator, say little g, it's its generator, and uh, if the order of that generator is infinity, that means that the group that it generates, you know, g, g squared, g cubed, g to the fourth, g to the fifth, d -d 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 g to the infinity, creates an infinite group, right? But it's a cyclic group, so you can have an infinite cyclic group. Um, what's a good example? Well, what's an obvious example? Well, uh, this one. This is, this is a an infinite uh, cyclic group. So what what's the what would the generator be in this case? Now the binary operation is plus. Right? Well, if the generator is just one, um, how? Well, let's let, let's say so g is is just one. Okay. So what would g cube be? Now that's just shorthand, remember, it's, it's, it's the same as this. Okay. It's, it's just shorthand for this. And now the binary operator is uh, plus, so, well, so this is 1 plus 1 plus 1. And that's, that's 3, that gives you 3. So if I went to uh, like g to the m, that would just give me n. Okay? And, uh, you know, I could, I could just keep doing this forever right, until I get the set of the integers. Now I can go minus, I can go minus and get a minus here. <coughs> so I can get all the integers. Now, uh, so, so you've got an idea now what an infinite cyclic group is. It's cyclic, has a generator, and that generator has no finite uh, order. Right? Its order is infinity. So it can just generate members of this infinite uh, group and, you know, forever. It just goes on and on. Okay, so, uh, so we now, we, we're, you know, we're back to um, isomorphism. So we have to show that uh, every finite cyclic group is isomorphic to, to this. Now, um, so 
So as usual, we have to start with uh, a choice for the mapping function. You know, what's your f? You're going to map what into what? Well, uh, now we're going to are we going to map this into this, or are we going to map this into this? Uh, I suppose in a way it doesn't matter. Does is that is that true? Like. Um, if set A is, uh, is isomorphic to set B, uh, it seems to me pretty obvious that set B is therefore isomorphic to set A, given, I mean, what is isomorphism? It means the two group tables are identical, right? So if A is identical to B, then B is identical to A. So, uh, how, how to get an isomorphism Now this this is just a set of integers, right? We're talking about integers. And a cyclic group, you're talking about powers of the generator. So uh, you know, your first your first step in your proof is, is uh, trying to find uh, an appropriate mapping. You know, you, you, what's your f? It maps what into what? So that, that's your first creative step, right? So uh, you've got a clue here. The powers of the generator, they're just integers. And these integers just go on forever and can generate uh, your set Z. Right? So that's, that's, that's probably a good clue for, for your F. So how, how about doing something like this? So F will map, uh, which way do we go? Probably, no, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Well, let, let's say we go from Z to, uh, well, let's call this infinite cyclic group. Let's call it A, right? As long as I've done the text, yeah, right? So we'll go that way, right? So instead of going from the group to the to this, let's go the other way. It's probably, probably easier. I don't think it matters which way you go, because if, if they're isomorphic, it's... A is isomorphic to B, B is isomorphic to A, so it's the same bit before. All right, uh, so let that, be, let that be your proposal. So, uh, so specifically, uh, now that's in terms of sets, you know, you're mapping this set into this one, or this group into this one. So, uh, so in terms of element, uh, we say let's say uh, let's say R is a member of your set of integers, and this is this, this, this is a hypothesis for what the the mapping is, and we have to show that uh, this this F for these two groups, uh, you know that they that this F satisfies the three criteria, right? It's well-formed, remember, from a bit before? Well-formed uh, is bijective, so it's injective, subjective. And the third one is then the, the F of MN equals FM, FN, yeah, the, the third one. Yeah, I've rubbed it off, it was here. Okay, so uh, let's, let's suggest that, uh, oh, we need so we're mapping this into this infinite group, cyclic group, infinite cyclic group. So we have a generator. So uh, let 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 a little a uh, be generator, be the generator of this infinite cyclic group A, the ge generator of a big A, right? So uh, this will be of this form, right? Now A is an infinite cyclic group, it has a generator, so this, this A to the R will be an element of A, okay? Because it's of, it's of the, the right form. So we're, uh, we're, now, we're now thinking about um, is this function well formed? Does it make sense? 
well, this is so trivial, there's almost no discussion, right? I mean, obviously, uh, now what does a function do? It maps an element of one set into one element of another set. Well, this uh, obviously as an integer, so it obviously belongs to that set, okay? And if you map that element into this element, this is of the form of a power of the generator. So this element obviously belongs to A, because what is A? It's the infinite cyclic group, right? And cyclic groups, every element of a cyc cyclic group is of that form, a generator to some power, okay? So that's our, that's our suggestion. Now that, that, seems, uh, that seems well formed, right? So that, that's the end of this, the discussion of uh, the well formed. That, that seems quite reasonable, I guess. All right. Okay, so uh, now we have to prove that this f is a bijective function. And to do that, of course, we have to prove the two parts, that it's injective and subjective. Uh, okay, so here's your z, here's your a, here's, here's an arbitrary element, uh, let's call it a to the r. Right. Now, to prove, let, let's, let's do subjective, it's probably easier. If, uh, if it's subjective, every element in this uh, target set, near the codomain, is mapped to. Okay. Now, this one gets mapped by what? Well, by R. Right. So for every A to the R, there's an R here. Okay, that's that, that that's that's the proof of its of uh, this f is f here. That's your mapper. Um, so for every for every element in your infinite cyclic group, uh, you know of the form a to the r, there will be an element here, r, the integer r, that that maps to it. Right. So every element in, in your codomain, your set A, uh, gets mapped to. This R here maps to that one, for all R. Okay? So, subjective, 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 